Ugh. <laughs> Every time I put on makeup in the morning, she tries to eat my face. So this morning, somebody asked me if my suspenders were holding my shirt down or my pants up. And I was like, it's a little bit of both, honestly. Is there anybody else over the age of 12 who just can't sit in a chair like a normal person? No, just me. Okay, moving on. Hey, today I want to solve a problem that really bugs me. One of those mildly infuriating, but at the end of the day, super annoying problems that really tick me off. Umbrellas. You buy them like this, and then you lose this, and then this comes off, and you can't hang them, and you can't put them in their little cute sleeve, and they end up all fluffy and disgusting and not pretty and cute anymore. This has been going on for years, and I intend to stop it today. Do you see this? Nothing to hang it from. No sleeve. Fluffy and ugly. Do you constantly lose your umbrella hangy straps and your umbrella sacks? Me too, super relatable. Here's what we're gonna do about that. You guys, I'm telling you, it's gonna be totally worth it when you're walking around with one of these bad boys and people are like, oh my God, where did you get that? And you're like, I made it. <laughs> you're gonna be like an umbrella badass cause you, you have a handle and nobody else does. And it never breaks because if it breaks, you know how to fix it. Also, this pattern that I decided to use with the shape of the umbrella looks a bit, a bit, a bit, it looks a little bit like a peanut and I kind of want to explore knitting these again in like a brownish yellow color, just for the lulz. Let's get down to business to knit umbrella bags. The supplies for this tutorial are cheap and simple, needles and yarn. I used a pair of size 7 needles I bought at Goodwill. And this yarn that is purple or blue, depending what light you're looking at it in. Fight over it in the comments. I linked a better pair of needles in the description box below. I am just a history obsessed history buff who thinks they haven't made a good set of needles since like 1952. The gauge for this project is 5 stitches per inch, at least I sure hope it is. Make a slip knot. Make a slip knot somewhere part way up your yarn and then stick your needle through it and then you are going to do a long tail cast on. This involves taking your thumb, wrapping the yarn around your thumb, and then slapping the yarn over the top of the needle like a little turtleneck. So let's do that again. Wrap it around your thumb, stick it on the top, put the other piece of yarn through it, and you know what? I'm just going to stop explaining it and let you watch it because I'm bad at explaining things, but you'll kind of see how I'm doing it if you watch. I could either crop this out or add 30 seconds of dialogue. Oh, it's already added. Of course, there's a drawback to a long tail cast on, and it's that you cannot have enough yarn left at the end of the tail and have to go back and pull it all out and start over. Also, someone could hand you the remote control while you're filming and ruin your shot. It's fine. It's fine. You're fine. Sometimes you have to live with people. Breathe through the pain. Honestly, I love my people and wouldn't trade them for anything. Let's cast it all on again. The bright side of me having to cast all these stitches on again is that you get to watch this again, and I truly believe that you will learn this skill by the time I learn it, even though I've been doing it forever, but I never put the right amount of yarn on the end. Let's do a deep dive into a long tail cast on while we're long tail casting on. It is one of the easiest cast on methods taught to new learners when they're learning how to knit. People say it's a quite elastic cast on, but I find it quite taut. That's probably just the way I do it. I pull it too tight. I'm watching myself pull it too tight right now. I love it for things like bags because it anchors all of my stitches at the beginning with two strands of yarn. So I don't have to worry as much that something is going to fall out of my bag or my stitches are gonna pull out videos are better than real life because you can skip to the part where it's already done did i tell you how many stitches to cast on 16 it's it's 16 you can cast on 20 if your yarn's a little thin or your needles are a little thin i know right whoa tiger you're getting ahead of me here 20 stitches that's too much for me what i'm doing here is counting my stitches to make sure i have the right number of stitches because if i have too many stitches my bag's going to be too big. If I have too few stitches, my bag's going to be too small. I'm just going to be honest with you. This pattern, once you started knitting it, is so easy that I have to waste my time talking about individual stitches and long tail cast-ons to make this video long enough. Otherwise, it will be a YouTube short. As you know, I love a good YouTube short, but I was hoping this one would be a YouTube long. 
Are you ready for this? It's time for the most complicated stitch in the world. I'm kidding. Just knit this row. Look at me speed knitting. I cannot actually speed knit, and I am very jealous of speed knitters. Fun fact, the fastest knitter in the free world is Miriam Tegels from the Netherlands, who knit 118 stitches in one calendar minute. That is 1.9 stitches per New York minute. How fast is that? An extremely fast typist types 80 words per minute. Typing requires only one movement, the clicking of the keys. Knitting requires three distinct movements. Putting the needle through the yarn, knitting the stitch, and then lifting the stitch off and onto the other needle. For the next row, we're going to knit one, and then we're going to make some holes by wrapping the yarn around the needle three times and then knitting two together on the next stitch. Again, we are going to wrap the yarn around the needle three times and then knit two together on the next stitch. It's going to be very tight but you can do it. What Miriam did was comparable to someone typing almost 300 words a minute. I used to be a relatively athletic, extremely competitive person. Not the best on the team, but able to contribute. After years of equestrian sport, water polo, and field hockey, having fallen off a horse, been kicked and bitten by a horse, nearly drowned on several occasions, and smacked in the face with a field hockey stick, I slipped, walking down a flight of stairs at school, fell, as they say, tip over tea kettle, and used my own head to cushion my landing. For almost a year, I was unable to get out of bed. I binge-watched every available show. I completely finished the internet. I finished the entire Food Channel and the entire History Channel, and there was nothing left in my life for me. So I started looking around for things that I could do that were competitive without the use of my legs. After this, you're going to knit two rows just to kind of cement that holy, holy roll, in, holy roll, holy row in place. Anyway, after finding myself in a wheelchair, I found out about knitting competitions, specifically speed knitting competitions, knitting marathons. I also found out that all of the cute little sweaters and bags Wait. that I was looking at that prompted me to want to learn to knit were actually crocheted, and I don't know how to crochet. Therefore, henceforth, and heretofore... I still have to buy my granny square scarves, my wow. granny square dresses, and my crocheted bags from other people. Hit me up in the comments if you know someone who makes them. Once we knit across that row, being careful to knit one stitch into the hole where we wrapped all three stitches, and then knit one stitch across the ones where we knit two together. At that point, we just need to continue with the pattern, which is again, knit, knit, knit all the way across this row. Here it is all sped up. Aren't you glad you didn't have to do this in real time? Unless you are doing this in real time. But it is a little bit easier to do it in real time when you can sit in front of the TV watching TV instead of sitting here watching your knitting. I hate watching my knitting, which is why I chose such a simple stitch for this bag. This microphone cuts off everything that I say, so I feel like I have to hyper pronounce the last syllable of everything and then hold the button down way too long. Like, I feel like I have to say, knit the next row. Yeet. If you haven't done it already, now is a really good time to take out your umbrella, decide how far up the umbrella you want the umbrella bag to go, and then measure your umbrella. This particular umbrella is broken as heck. Water isn't really great for Velcro. <laughs> go figure. You know what would solve that? An umbrella bag that actually dries it. But it's got to be the right length, so... Let's take out our measuring tape. Measure from wherever you want the umbrella bag to go to wherever you want the umbrella bag to go on the other side. It's not an exact science, and I might completely ignore my measurements later thinking, that seems too long, and then make it too short, but hopefully you won't. Mine's about 18 inches, give or take. Now you're just going to knit this piece to 18 inches, or however long your umbrella turned out to be, remembering that the first row is one row of knit stitches, and the second row is a row of knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl, all the way across, and just keep going for a very long time. If you knit the wrong row at the wrong time, just pull it out and start over again. Pass the time by endlessly watching Johnny Ross videos. After a while, you may notice that your little bag is starting to have a nubbly texture on one side. 
and a fancy smooth sort of texture on the other side. This is what we want, choice. Nubbly or smooth, Coke or Pepsi, Vicky or Amazon Prime. Why not both? Why not both in the same bag? For real though, I love a knit stitch that creates two different fabrics on two different sides. I love being able to turn something inside out and be wearing or holding something totally different. I love reversibles. I theorize that the only reason why it is so impossible to buy reversible things is simply because it uses twice as much fabric. But I am honestly still waiting for fashion's reversibles revolution. It used to be a pretty big thing in children's fashion in the 90s. There used to be a super popular brand in the 90s in Canada that was called Timike Functional Kids Wear with a K. They made reversible dresses, jumpers, and pants, sort of like this one, but they looked a lot cooler. It seems like the relationship split up and Ken left Tamea to do all of the marketing and all of the sewing at the same time. It was kind of sad, honestly, because her children's wear was so cute, and in their heyday, everyone had to have these clothes. I mean, if your child didn't have at least one of her dresses or pairs of pants, you were an outcast at mommy group. I don't know if that was the case in your neck of the woods, but in Canada, it was like a pretty big deal. I always imagined myself having grandchildren one day and buying Timike outfits for them. I guess I should have kept the ones that I had. I am now about four hours into this marathon knitting session. If you have numerous projects to make for the holidays, you will definitely at some point end up knitting while lying on your back, staring at the ceiling, wondering why you decided to make things instead of buying things for your family for this holiday. This ain't no country for old men, son. You're going to have to fight to survive. If you're trying to become an Instagram model, I highly suggest getting a dog like Ella. She will lay down behind you and force you to bow your entire back over her. In time, your back will become permanently bowed with your butt stuck out in the classic Instagram position. Don't come at me in the comments, fake animal rights, internet animal rights activists. If she was not perfectly comfortable, trust me, she would get up. Seriously, Ella, do you mind? Okay, let's recap this pattern. You're gonna knit one row. You're gonna knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, knit purl the next row. Get up because the dog won't get out from underneath you. And you just know that everybody's gonna side with the dog. Take the dog for a walk. Come back, start knitting again. Ella has learned to stop chewing on my knitting needles. She now comes up beside me and gives herself a pedicure whenever I'm knitting, which is, it's fine. Go out, live your life, come back, knit your evening away while watching episodes of old 90s dramas. In my case, Smallville. When people come in and ask, why are you still knitting? Just say the word Christmas in your best zombie voice. Christmas. Been sitting around too long and need exercise? Knit in frog pose. Knit in goddess pose. Knit in bent over straddle pose. Fall over. Knit wherever you land. If you have the flexibility, knit in reverse prayer pose. Knit in boat pose. Just keep going and do not quit until you finally reach the end of your marathon. When your piece is finally long enough, you're going to do exactly what you did at the beginning on the other side. Knit two rows, then knit one, wrap three, knit two together until the end of the row, and then knit another two rows. Basically, just take whatever you did at the beginning and then, you know, do it backwards. Here's how you do that wrap row again. Remember, knit one, wrap three, knit two together, wrap three, knit two together, wrap three, knit two together, wrap three, knit two together until you reach the end of the row. Knit two more rows after that and then just bind off. To bind off, you just knit one stitch, knit the next stitch, and then leapfrog the first stitch over the second stitch in order to get both stitches off the needle, like so. I'm not gonna lie, you can finish one of these in a day, but it's not like an easy sit down in front of the TV. Oh my God, look, I've got a dishcloth day. It's like an intense day. It's like your whole day. Normally I would knit some eye cord for one of these, but I'm trying to get all of these projects done really quickly because it's already December, which means I have like 20 days before the last possible day I can send these out and expect them to actually get to people. So after I'm finished stitching up besides this, which I don't think you need to watch, like you know how to use a needle and thread. It's just a big fat sewing <laughs> needle for a knitting yarn. You just thread. I'm not wasting time on that. <laughs> I can't afford to waste time on anything right now. You just thread, you thread through, 
you sew this up and we'll come back. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to make a cord for this. It's not made of I-cord. We're just gonna crochet it. I never did learn how to crochet properly. I never learned how to do all the cool fun stitches, but I can make a straight line. So <laughs> I've been able to make a straight line since I was six and I've been trying to figure out how to make it go in a circle since then. It's terrible. If you guys ever want to see that, just uh, comment for one. <laughs> Anyways, so what you do is you take your crochet hook, you put a loop on it, you hold it like this, and you just wrap it around there, and then you pull this guy over its head. Similar to knitting, but on one thing. And then you just keep doing that. And if you keep doing that for a while, <laughs> then you'll make a cord. My advice is to definitely just keep holding this flat to the back of your uh, crochet hook so it doesn't get twisted or tangled or anything like that. And yeah, just keep doing this. The cord that you're gonna make is not as strong as I corded. It is a more stretchy cord, but it does give your little umbrella bag kind of a rustic look, which is fun. And a lot of people like these ones better. So if you're making this one as a commission or someone's asked you to make it, ask them what kind do they like. Fold your bag over itself lengthwise and then sew the sides, this side and this side. Do you ever feel like you want to move somewhere else just because of the weather? This week here we've had rain, snow, sun. It's been everything from summer to winter. Yesterday it was freezing cold and snowing. Today it's warm and raining. Last year we had a white Christmas and I started a new job in February. In order to catch the transit I had to walk across a long sheer piece of ice on a sidewalk that had a ton of bumps in it for some reason. The roads were cleared but there were huge snow hills beside the sidewalk so if you had to cross the street you were probably going to fall. And I did. I fell and ripped open my kneecap and hit my head. A lot of residents complained about the uncleared sidewalks that year, so much so that when one city councillor had her house vandalized, she suggested that it had happened because residents were tired of waiting for the sidewalks to be cleared. Given the amount of pain I was in and the fact that I had lost my job, I found that pretty immature and a very good argument for doing what my neighbors do and living in Mexico three months out of the year. Anyway, once you've got your bag stitched up, it should perfectly fit around your umbrella. I made this one a little shorter than the others because I envisioned the umbrella coming out the end of it like a rose, so I've fluffed it up a bit. Remember those little holes you made at each end? Here's what they're for. You just take your cord that you made with the crochet hook or your eye cord and you thread it through the little holes, leave a bit hanging out the back, loop it around your hand, tie a knot in it, and then you're just going to thread it through the other side there and then tie the other side together in a bow. You can also tie a knot at the end of this just so that it doesn't come out. Or you can live life on the wild side and just let it fall out all the time. Here's what the finished product looks like. You can make it longer or shorter or a wine bag or a beer cozy according to your specifications. I chose to fluff out the umbrella and make it look like a little rose at the top of this particular umbrella bag. All right, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you have your own umbrella bag now and you're never again struggling with an umbrella that doesn't have a tie or doesn't have a bag. And also these like dry your umbrella when you put them in there. So like it does double duty. It's also machine washable, unlike whatever the hell this is. Whatever the heck, whatever the heck. And I want to swear on YouTube. And they're really quick to knit up. This one took me like an hour. So yeah. If you want to find the exact materials that I use to make this, they're in the description box below. I've put them in my Amazon store so that you can just go to my Amazon store and really easily just add them to your cart. I mean, if you were going to buy yarn anyway, it's just an extra nice gesture on your part to also give me like two cents from Amazon when you buy a whole ball of yarn. You don't have to, which is what makes it really awesome of you. You can also show me the love by hitting the like button, hitting the subscription bell, you know, watching my other videos, or leave me a comment. Not a spam one. You know what though, realistically, even if it's just like, I hate you, you're such a loser, I don't know why I watched your video, I find you so annoying. Sadly, it still positively triggers the algorithm. It should be more incentive to watch more things that you like and that are informative and enjoyable rather than things that you don't like and that make you miserable and that are hurtful. I have a suggestion. All right, have a great week and I'll see you next week with another how to make a gift video. Uh, next week's video is a little bit easier. Also working on some DIYs because I just bought a new table for this room. We're going to be refinishing it. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. Bye.